evening as we join together this night, this Monday Thursday night, for worship from Breckenridge Lutheran Church. As we join together on this evening, we begin, as we have been doing during this time of Lent, with silence. A time for us to reflect uh, on our relationship with God. A time for us to take a break from the busy schedule or busy day we may have had. A time for listening. And listening to God. Listening to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because Lent and Holy Week, especially Monday, Thursday, is a time of reflection and repentance, then we begin this worship formally with a time for confession and forgiveness of sin. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we that are, are captive, captive to sin. To sin. We cannot free, free ourselves we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I, Therefore, declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we hear about on this evening, I forgive you all of your sins. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Holy God, the source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all 
your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading on this evening of Monday Thursday is from the book of Exodus. Monday Thursday, the night of Jesus' Last Supper, is a celebration in the Gospels of the Jewish Passover, for Jesus and his disciples were all very Jewish. And they gather there on this highest of Jewish holidays to remember what God did for the Hebrews and bringing them out of slavery in the land of Egypt nearly 1,200 years earlier. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be marking for you the beginning of all months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A, a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any, any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall not let none of it remain. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord God. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Our second lesson is from Paul's letter, first letter, to the believers in Corinth. And in it, he, he explains to them the origin of this uh, of this, of this rite that they observe of, of breaking bread and, uh, and having wine. And, and for many of those believers who were not raised as Jews, who were not raised as Jews, why it's so important. For I, Paul writes, received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here ends our second reading. Thanks be to God. A gospel acclamation. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Our gospel reading for this Monday Thursday is from John chapter 13. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and he was going to God, got up from the table and he took off his outer robe and he he tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you'll understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless... I wash you. You have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you're clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, You are blessed if you do them. Now, the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends our gospel reading. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's sing together our hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane, page 347.
hymn number 347. to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus on this most unusual of Maundy Thursdays. Maundy Thursday gets its name, Maundy, from the Latin word mandatum, which which is where we get the word mandate. It is the evening where we talk about Jesus' mandate And the question often uh, is, uh, what does Jesus mandate? You'll notice tonight as I read the gospel lesson from John that there is no mandate there to have communion. And I must tell you that this is uh, the first time in 30 years of ministry when I have not um, presided over and shared communion with my congregation. And indeed, in that gospel lesson, there is no mandate to have communion. That said, I feel for my first communion class, which is not sharing together and joining in that tonight. The mandate, the the ordinance, the, the, the command that Jesus gives, of course, tonight in the gospel according to John, is to wash each other's feet. Now, this is an order to do something that we probably would not do unless we were ordered. We certainly wouldn't want to do it. In Jesus' time, it was a servant's job. Um, It was sort of one of the least of things, cleaning up after people and washing them. It it was to wash the, the dust and and the dirt and whatever else off a person's feet. 
It was, it was also cleansing and refreshing, but it was a simple um, a piece of labor that was given that did not require a lot of skill, and so it was given to the least of the servants. And it's reasonable to assume in Jesus' time that, um, that Jesus and, and, and especially Peter and others believed that it was about, it was about dirt. Jews were particular and had a way of thinking about, about purity and that which was no longer pure. It's why they kept separate utensils for cooking some things and not others, why they would eat some things and not others, why there would be separateness in terms socially and in other times uh, they would not get together with other people. There was also a sense for washing a person's feet. Not only you were dealing with the dirt, but you were also lowering yourself. This was important because for, for Jews, for Jews, um, they had a very, very strong sense, especially at the Passover, that they had once themselves been slaves. And uh, Moses and God's choice had removed them from slavery and servitude and getting on their knees and washing the feet of others. Of course, some churches still uh, reserve this night for this particular, um, and they call it a sacrament. On Monday, Thursday, um, a number of people will come and there will be foot washing to depending on the size of the congregation, it might include everyone. And they treat it, they treat it as important as Jesus' other commands. It is considered a sacrament. It is considered a, a mandate that we do this. And this evening, uh, if you've seen the church website, you've, you've seen that... Uh, we even offered it as a piece of uh, family Sunday school, instructional, something that, that parents and kids can do at home with one another. To use it as an instructional time to remind us that parents and, and, and children are in God's eyes, all children of God, not one above another. And they're both meant to serve one another. Granted, there is a time in the life when the parent serves greatly the child, but it will only be a matter of years until the child then is serving the parent. But what if instead of a basin and a towel and uh, someone taking off their, their socks, we've done that here before, what if we rethink this in a radical way and instead of talking about this as an evening to be mandated to, uh, to uh, wash people's feet, we think about it as an evening now to be mandated to wash hands. Have you been told to wash your hands lately? Hmm? <laughs> More than once, right? Uh, and not just idly. Um, our people in our family, we are now re reminding each other to wash our hands. Now, I remember as a kid, my mother was um, um, a very fastidious, that's putting it nicely, extremely fastidious, clean woman. Uh, and uh, there, I remember being told, wash your hands before you come to the table. You know, and part of that was get that fuller brush out, the special one, the nail brush out, and go after. I, can, I don't want to look underneath your fingernails and see chunks of dirt. And then there was, when you got there, there was nail inspection. Some of you are old enough to remember in school having to come and, and wash your hands and, and make sure, and the teacher would check them. It's like, did you, get, did you actually wash those hands or, or did you, as my mother would refer to it, uh, Helen would say, or did you just give them a lick and a promise? Yeah, I did my best. Okay, I'm done. My mom was a neat person excruciatingly so it seems sometimes. She would have us, she would have us strip off our filthy, now this is a word we don't use very often, our filthy clothes 
and run through the house in our underwear straight to the tub where we would leave a dirt ring where you could tell exactly where the water line had been at the end of the day. Well, that was then. Now, now we have to worry about more than dirt, don't we? We worry about germs. We worry about viruses. And we can't all just jump in the same bathtub anymore like back then just to get clean. We have to be separated and very alert. Like, like the Jews in Jesus and Peter's time who were concerned about, about purity, we're concerned about germs and infection. Will there be enough hand sanitizer? Will there be enough masks? How much of my body should I be washing? Everything that's exposed up to the elbows? Should I throw in, as Peter says, my, my uh, you know, my my, my hands and my feet and my, my face and we ask these questions of ourselves and those around us will there be enough to protect me should I limit my exposure to others and by how far Minnesotans, of course, have no problem negotiating six feet of distance from one another. How far? How many? It's difficult. We're living in a time where we are concerned not so much about dirt, but germs and infection. But maybe this hand washing and this social distancing, this shelter in place, isn't about that. It, it's not ultimately about germs or keeping distance, but as Jesus has said, it's about loving and showing love and, and teaching service to our neighbor. It's not ultimately about germs, but it's about Jesus. It's not ultimately uh, um, uh, about, uh, about our social connections, but, but our social love and service. It's about teaching service. It's about teaching service. This is what Jesus says about teaching service in our lesson tonight. After he'd washed their feet and put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and, and Lord. And you're right, for that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Sometimes social distancing then is a way of loving our neighbor. It's a way of serving our neighbor. It's a way that we teach to others. It's a way in what we do um, as an example to those around us of the way that we desire as well. But it's more than that. It's about showing and doing love for your neighbor as well. For Jesus says this then, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. You do not need a government order to wash your hands or shelter in place. You, you need to love your neighbor. This is at the heart of all this. This is, you argue for whatever it may be and, 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 
and, and we don't have all the answers. We readily admit we don't know lots. But we do know what Jesus Christ has asked us to do, which is to look out after one another and motivated not by fear, but by love for one another. Not by rules, but by the simple commandment that we are to love as he loved and to live as he lived and to act as he acted and so set it for an example for everyone else. Your love is to not wash feet, but to do whatever it takes to protect your neighbor. It may mean washing your hands over and over and over and over again. And your service is to not look for germs, for you will have a difficult time seeing them. But look for the people that you see around you. And in them see someone to serve. In them see Jesus Christ bidding you, asking you to serve. As Jesus looked for and laid his life down for us. Our mandate is... Um, Maybe not so much to wash feet. But our mandate, at least during this time, this special time, in all that we do to protect others, is to love them by doing it. May this strange, singular, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter be a chance to love those people around you in a new and different way than you have ever done before. But no that it's done as a result of love. However and wherever it takes you. Amen. Let's continue our worship by singing. And if we would, we would join together in the hymn, Were You There? 353, verses 1 and 2. This time, we would uh, continue our worship with uh, offerings and tithes. I want to use it just as a moment to express thank you on behalf of our church leadership and our church council for your generosity over these last number of weeks. Um, there's always a bit of fear, I believe, at the church leadership that when we don't have worship, when we don't physically pass those collection plates around, we're all of a sudden going to be left in a lurch. And, uh, you know, that's, that's um, 
that is uh, not faith, obviously, um, but it's, hum it's, it's being human. And uh, I would like to thank all of the people of this congregation who have been sometimes more faithful than we have in your giving and your tithes and your offerings and, and ask you to keep up the good work as we continue into this month uh, and as we uh, move through this great three days of Holy Week now. Thank you so much. I have some other announcements I'd like to bring for you. Tomorrow night we will have joint worship here at uh, our church with the United Methodist Church pastor, Mark Ronseth and I, who regularly visit other places and work together uh, bringing worship to uh, St. Francis and Apple Tree Court and uh, also uh, uh, the uh, St. Catharines. Uh, we go to a number of places. We'll together bring worship here tonight, or, or rather tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And so we ask that you would join in with our worship at uh, 8 p.m. over cable channel 12. We'll also have worship then on Sunday live at 9 a.m. over cable channel 12. A delayed radio broadcast of this evening's worship, Monday, Thursday, will be presented at 8.30 in the morning over KBMW. We also have, uh, hope to have a live Facebook stream occurring at 9 a.m. as well over the Breckenridge Lutheran Church Facebook page. Some other announcements that I want to bring to you. Continued prayers for Helen Kent's cousin who has contracted COVID-19 and he is hospitalized in intensive care in Florida he also has three other family members as well who have uh, contracted it and are infected. Do keep Helen Kent's cousin's family in your prayers. Continued prayers for Aston, uh, uh, excuse me, Aspen Perez, uh, um, Anna Hodge's daughter, who this week uh, was hospitalized uh, with ruptured appendix and she was, uh, had uh, surgery for those. She is up at the hospital. Um, being well taken care of, but she's a sick little girl, and they're giving and attending to her as best that uh, they can. Anna has access to her, but uh, very few other people do. Let us hold this family up in our prayers as she is continuing to be uh, treated. Wendy Camel, for her ongoing chemotherapy, do keep them, uh, her family, in mind as well. For the parents and guardians who are teaching their faith at home uh, with the uh, lessons that we posted for today or tomorrow, and also for all of the First Communion students who would have joined here together tonight with their families and celebrated First Communion and for whom this has been put off until a later time. I am thinking of you um, and uh, uh, we will, we will do this yet, my fifth graders. For all of those who are sick, but also for all of those who serve the sick in various and many different ways in our world and, and, and locally here. Members of my congregation who I've been calling, particularly those healthcare providers, and praying with you during this stressful time. For all whom this pandemic brings the sting of death in Minnesota, we have over 50 people now who have died, I believe. Uh, and for this holy week, let it be holy because of the holiness, O Lord, that you bring to all of this. Now, in the midst of all of this, we do have good news, good news. And the good news is that, uh, that Jessica Monroe and Andrew Prosser, they had a baby. And uh, Andrew is... Uh, Roy and Margaret's, uh, Moreau's grandson. And, uh, and this little girl's name is Adeline Grace Prosser. She's five pounds, nine ounces, 19 inches long. And she now shares the birthday with her grandmother, Kim. And so they're excited about that. Um, God bless them. Uh, it's always good to hear good news at a time like this. Let us pray. God of love, unite your church 
in its commitment to humble service like Jesus. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness and let us love one another as you have loved us. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow in this world and in our corner of it, this valley. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. We especially pray for all who are being, who are being ministered to by government and private agencies and churches in this time of pandemic. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit, especially those who physically battle disease, but also spiritually in fear, in fear are terrified Bring peace, bring health. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls. Let your love and welcome be made known to all. We especially pray for particular people. Even as we hold up the needs of all, we pray particularly for Helen Kent's cousins and family, for Aspen Perez recovering in the hospital, for Wendy Camel in her chemotherapy, for all those who are sick, for those who serve the sick, for those who have lost now a loved one to the sting of death in this pandemic, for those who at home are watching, and for those that seek to raise their children in the faith through their acts of, of training and acts of kindness and, and acts of observing and teaching at home. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, Hear these and all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace be with you then as you have gathered to watch us, as you have gathered in your homes. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a world in crisis, we may not be able to wash the feet, but it's important that we wash our hands. It seems like something simple, and as I've spoken about here, it may be much deeper than that. It may be much deeper than uh, soap and singing. It may, be, it may be water and prayers and imagining whom you are serving in doing it. And as we've gathered here then today, we continue praying a prayer which unites us all no matter where we are, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may you be blessed with health and safety, with good health in the way also that you treat others, and safety in all that you do and say during this time of pandemic and during this time of care and love for one another. Amen. Let's join together in finishing then this hymn which we began. Were you there? Hymn 353 verses 3, 4, and 5.
hearts and know that the Lord your God moves in you and with you even during this time when we cannot gather together. Amen. someone tried calling. 